Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday's Texas Book Talk and the Flipping Dreams Live podcast. Um, I'm here. I'm your host, Heather Renee May, and um, excited to share with you what ha has been happening on Book Tour. Um, so I'm going to start with kind of what happened last weekend on tour, give you some good stories. I'm um, going to talk about the upcoming weekend adventures, activities that you can join in on uh, if you're interested. Um, I'm going to tell you about strange smells in my RV and what happened there. Uh, talk about some neighbors, some of my new neighbors, and uh, and then talk about, do a little section on reader feedback. So hopefully you uh, will enjoy listening to this settling in. I am using my old uh, microphone. Hopefully it's a little better quality of sound, um, but let me know and I'll listen to it as well and see if I like it better. I might get in a different microphone as well. So anyway, okay, let's kick things off. So book tour news. So last week, last weekend was the 8th Street Market Silobration downtown in Waco. And um, that was a three-day event. And it was, it's a lot of work. It's really, it was hot. It was long days. I was by myself because Dottie, it was too hot for Dottie. So uh, I took her to play with her besties. And instead I was um, holding down the fort in front of, uh, so, so 8th Street Market is, um, if you're, if you are at the Magnolia compound, <laughs> I shouldn't call it that, but Magnolia, yeah, uh, space. Um, and on 8th Street, they have an entrance, and it's right across the street is Jimmy Don's Metal Sign Shop. And everyone loves to meet Jimmy Don, and everyone loves to get the pictures and get him, and he always signs everyone's uh, metal signs and all the things. He's he's really good about that. So, um, so there's, yeah, there's pop-up tents there in front of his shop, and that's where I was. So, oh, I forgot too. In my list of things, we're gonna. I'm writing it down on my little. I have. I have a little. Oops, sorry about that. I have a little. Um, a little white board here to keep myself on track with all the things. But I need to give you an update for the care camps donations where we're at. Okay. So anyway, there I was. I had my market. I had my books. It was, um, it was a pretty good, it was slow the first couple of days, but Sun or Saturday really picked up. And, um, I th think I didn't do a total count, but, um, I did meet my goal for covering my expenses so that that was good. And I met a lot of wonderful people and I did meet some great return readers like Kathy and her friends. Uh, they came, um, and I saw them two years ago at the market and they had bought my books then. So it was really fun to see them. Uh, she's been one of the readers that has messaged me trying to get me, you know, asking me when's book three, when's book three. And I was just like, I don't even know that I'm going to do book three. I don't even know my name. I don't even know my purpose in life, but, um, but yes, indeed I did do book three and they were really excited to come and see it and to get their copies and all of that good stuff. So we took pictures and I posted that on social media. Um, so yeah. And Silobration, it was a little bit quieter, I think this, you know, event, but Baylor homecoming was also happening. There's a lot of stuff going on downtown or just around in Waco. And, um, it was indeed very hot and, uh, yeah, but I think that everyone, okay. The thing I like most about Silobration, um, it's easy. Okay. You know how, when you're used to something and it's like, especially if it's like a tourist kind of related thing and you're just like, yeah, yeah, been there, done it. It's just kind of, it's not that exciting anymore. And you're just like, I don't really care. And it, you know, but like, if I think back four or five years ago, when I would come and visit Waco and I would go, like when I went to Magnolia, when I went to the silos for the first time and I had that look in my eye and I was just like, oh, you know, and get to go, you know, am I going to see Chip and Jojo? And then I'd go to the market and I'd like go, you know, get my, you know, little, I get my signed cookbook, you know, whatever version it was at the time, which I still, 
I still think number one cookbook, sorry, Joanna, but I think your first cookbook was the best. Those are the recipes without fail. I always go to, especially at the end of the season, when it starts getting cooler, the casseroles, the King Ranch casserole, the stuff. Oh, those are some of the best recipes. So anyway, um, but yeah, I remember like just the excitement and just, you know, and then I'd share it with my brother and his sister-in-law. I mean, his, my sister-in-law, his wife, who, you know, they were always really, you know, into Magnolia and all the things and, but they're in the Northwest and they can't easily travel here. And so it was really fun to be like, Hey, look what I look where I'm at and take pictures and share it and send them stuff. So, um, so yeah. So what's cool about so the point of this is that what's cool about this is when I get to go and do this event and I'm like, okay, I'm an author. I've been here before. This is, you know, like, oh, da, da, I already know the drill. And then you see that look on people's faces where they're like, oh, it's Magnolia. And I had this kid. Oh my God. She was so cute. Maybe she was like seven or eight. And she came to me and she goes, do you think that Joanna, like I'll be able to see Joanna? And I was like, well, maybe because, you know, sometimes they do pop up, especially if she has a book out or something going on. Like, you know, they do make appearances or from what I hear from Intel is that, uh, you know, they'll put their hats on their baseball hats trying to hide and like blend in with the crowd to just kind of see how things are going. So, but she, when she heard that, she was just so excited. She couldn't wait to get back over there and see if she could spot Joanna and ship mostly Joanna. She was excited about. So anyway, it's just really neat. And I love that. I love that, um, reminder of us to be in wonder, you know, life is kind of monotonous. It's routine based. It's so many things, right? So many checklists, rules, things we have to do, blah, blah, blah. It's super easy to just, you know, lose your luster, lose your sense of wonder about life. But then you have moments like that where you see it in someone else's eyes and it kind of reminds you of your own glow and your own spark and the things that like, made you excited to begin with. Like I'm three books in now and I feel like I need to really reevaluate my next book, how I want to release it because this was, it's just a lot of work to do a paperback and do a tour this way. And it takes the joy out of writing for me in a lot of ways because I'm so busy spending most of my time trying to figure out all the other things, marketing, publishing, all the stuff um, that I might experiment. I might branch off and experiment and do like something like a novella or do something where like it's chap where I'm releasing chapters, you know, at a time. And, you know, you get to kind of just tune in and join the ride. I don't know. I need to think about it because I feel like I'm losing my joy and wonder in the whole process. And then I have to remember my, you know, remind myself to go back and be like, yeah, but three books ago, this was your first time you ever wrote a book. And you remember how, you know, a mixture of fear, anticipation, excitement, all the things like I had this book baby inside me that I really wanted to get out this story. And I had no idea whether I'd be able to do it, but it was COVID. So I took a shot because I had nothing to lose. I had nothing else going on. I was in an 18 foot travel trailer in Spicewood, Texas, watching Hallmark movies. And I couldn't watch another trope about a bakery or a failed business or a Christmas tree farm. Like I needed to read something. I wanted to write the story I wanted to read. I wanted to write the story with RV life where there's wine, there's beautiful hill country scenery where she has to save herself, but maybe she gets the good guy too. Like I wanted to write the book I wanted to read. So I think it was really, I think that's the thing about events that remind me, get me out of my monotonous routine of the work of it, the work, you know, labor of love of it and remind me like, oh yeah, this is a thing that you like, remember that spark, remember that spark. And I did meet, I would say it was three, maybe four authors that came to the market that were children's book authors that were asking me questions about publishing and self-publishing because they had written their books, uh, most of them, like had written their books, ready to go, 
weren't sure how to publish, weren't sure the platform, the way to do it, how did you get the cover art, how to do all the things. And it was really wonderful to be able to spend some time with them and see like where I was at three books ago of like all the questions and all the just confusion and the, the fear and all the things, uh, you know, wrapped up into it and, um, and get to be able to share. And absolutely, if you're listening to this, um, if you're a flipping dreamer listening to this on the podcast, if you're someone watching this on the live stream, uh, if you don't know me, you should know that I love to help other people. I am very big on sharing knowledge and resources. So if you have any questions, if writing a book or publishing a book is something that you have in your heart and you're like, I just, I'm not quite sure about some things and I'm, I need a little, maybe encouragement, maybe advice, maybe resources, maybe a pointer or two, reach out to me. You can go to my website um, and there's an email form and it comes right to my email address and I'll respond. So um, please, please do that because I do think that everyone, everyone deserves to have their dreams realized. You know, it's such a big part of us as humans in this world and this life that we are living. Okay. So that's my recap from 8th Street Market. Oh, so one more thing. So let's talk now about the care camps donation level. All right. Because at the market, you know, I tell people I have it on signs, but every book sale of book three, every book sale of book three is being a dollar is being donated to care camps org. And what that is, is it's for kids that are suffering from cancer and they're struggling and going through treatments. And it allows they and their families to go camp and enjoy life without worrying about things. They take care of the expenses. The kids get to be kids. They get to go and camp, be in the outdoors. There's nothing more healing than being out in nature and camping. And so the a lot of KOAs um, are part of this. But uh, once I found out about it from the KOAs that are doing, you know, are participating in my book tour, I was like, I'm just going to do it for every book. So I had a lady when I told her this, she was buying my book, the bundle, and I was putting it together for her. And then she whipped out a $20 bill and handed it to me. And she said, here, this is for the extra donation for care camps. Those kids deserve it. And it was just so sweet. Like, I love that so much. Um, so there's some people that have really great big hearts and thank God, you know, I mean, again, it's that thing reminding us that, you know, life can be kind of frustrating and crappy sometimes and people can be challenging, but then there are people that are wonderful and that make, make the day just a little bit better. Right. So that's what we hope for. We look for those moments. Right. So, um, so yeah, so I think, um, oh, where were we at with the donation? Um, I have a little tally on my phone. And so, um, we are at, I think we are at now a 50, we're at a hundred dollars for care camps. Okay. It doesn't sound like much, but we have a long tour to go. So we're going to get there. You know, my, my goal is a thousand books, a thousand bucks. We'll see. Oh, and also this is not taking into account Amazon sales and I have not checked my Amazon sales. That's just in person. So stay tuned. I'll give you an update next week. Once I check some Amazon sales. All right, moving right along. Where are we going on book tour this coming weekend? Let me tell you. We are going to the KOA Alamo in San Antonio. I am so excited about this event. Lee and Nikki and everyone have been working with me on this to create this really special event for you all. And um, you should really come and check it out. You can get 10% off your RV sites or cabins booking for the night for Saturday, it's Saturday the 19th. They also have a lot of Halloween activities going on too for kids. So it's great perfect time to do a getaway for a weekend with your family or not, or with your dogs or whatever. They are very dog friendly. Dottie will be there. And we are starting off with like a wine tasting. I think they're going to do some charcuterie and book signing. Then we are doing a bingo game, a fun wine, Texas wine themed bingo game with prizes. And we're raffling off. Oh, I have this to show you now. We are raffling off a commemorative bottle. And if you are listening to this on Flipping Dreams, I am holding up a bottle of white wine from Texas Heritage Vineyard. It's a, what is it? Oh, Albarino. 
It is a 2022 Albarino from Texas Heritage Vineyard. It is a Texas Hill Country Vineyards. And it has a label of my book on it, um, a commemorative bottle of wine. So we are raffling this off on the weekend. So if you come to these events where I'm doing these special like RV events, not the uh, kind of market events, but the actual like in-person hanging out with me events, I'll raffle off a one bottle for every event. So you could win this and get to drink and have your Texas wine. And then after we do that event, we're going to do a campfire session. They have a big fire pit at the Alamo KOA and we're going to sit there and um, I think I'm going to do some readings and we're going to, you know, bring your own s'mores. You can hang out by the fire and um, yeah, it's going to be really fun. So look, really looking forward to that event. Um, and, you know, again, I really love, I love all the events. I love meeting everyone. I particularly like the kind of more intimate, smaller events where I get to really talk with people, share my story. People can ask me questions about the characters, about the story, um, get to read some of it. So yeah, you know, like, so the intimate stuff is kind of fun too. Also, there might be another holiday rambler or two. That is the RV that I have. I have a holiday rambler 2004 Admiral that's been renovated and um, I'm in a holiday ramblers group. So what, you know, hopefully uh, maybe some, some of those folks are going to come too. And then we can talk shop about RVs and admirals and well, most people have like, there's different types, endeavors, whatever, but the, uh, there's a big, very strong group of people that love these older RVs, this holiday Rambler, uh, RVs, and I love mine. So it's really fun to get to meet those folks in person. All right. Speaking of RVs. So two days ago, so you, you, you'd think like, oh, Heather, your life is wonderful. You live in an RV. You travel around. You have a book tour. La, 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 la. Let me tell you a little glimpse of the reality behind the scenes of this supposed perfect Instagram life, right? Um, I woke up the other morning. My nostrils were burning like burning. My rig smelled like I was in an outhouse. Like it was. I opened an air things that was like happening here. Um, and I knew I was some issues with one of the valves, the way the Valterra valve is like a twist valve for your RV. And I knew that the black tank valve inside the original was mushy. It was not seating all the way, but it's not something you can replace easily the way they've built these rigs. And so there was another, the previous owners attached this twisting Valterra valve. Um, but there was, oh, I started noticing a little leak seeping down and it apparently got worse. And let me tell you, Sewage can get smelly really, really, really fast. And I was that girl. I was the girl with the stinky RV. Yeah. Oh, it was so frustrating. So I finally, I had ordered. I was like, well, let me, I try to do DIY. I try to figure these things out myself as much as I can. So I went online and I was like, okay, let me order another Valterra valve. Let me try to replace it myself. Let me like, you know, so I ordered it, but I mean, the smell was so bad and, you know, I'm working, I, my day job, I work from the rig. So I was like, I can't work. I can't breathe. I can't. Oh my God. This is horrible. Dottie doesn't even want to be inside anymore. So I finally reached out. I was like, okay, I need help. I need to phone a friend. So I Googled and found, um, you know, and just tried. I like reached out to a mobile RV mechanic here in our, in Waco. And I've done this before. I did have a guy come out and help me with the fuel tank or the fuel line to the generator. Um, but I kind of wanted to try someone else and I was like, okay, let me see. So I ended up calling this guy, this man, we're going to start calling him St. Jim. Yes. St. Jim showed up within, like he was on top of someone's rig, fixing their AC when he's talking to me with his headless cord, you know, his ear butt in. And he's like, well, you know, okay, you know, let me call you when I'm done with this job. And then like 15 minutes later, 
I'm here. <laughs> I'm like, excellent. So he shows up. He was here for four hours. St. Jim. First of all, we got underneath there and he was, I had to empty and flush the whole tank really well. Cause you know, we were going to take things off. I didn't want him, you know, to get sprayed with anything. So did all of that. And then he's like looking at it and he's like, you know, the only way that we can do this. And like, he was really thoughtful about it, but basically he had to cut the nubs off the old connector, sand them down. So it was just a tube that was smooth, put a bunch of glue. He had another three, there, there are three inch in diameter hoses, like PVC pipes. And so he had a bunch of glue, plumber's glue, shoved that connector on there, got it to seat really well to try to fix the leak that was strict, that was trickling, then added, um, another valve, but this time instead of the Valterra twist on and off, it's a permanent valve that you just pull a pull valve. And we put that together and let it sit, let it, let it, you know, kind of seat. And then we had to go up on the roof because I really wasn't convinced that the roof vent was working properly. And so we ran water down the roof vent to get whatever was in there blocking out and then let that run flush that vent really, really good. And then he had an, a different roof vent because the one I had was basically not working. It was a 360, very old, 20 years, you know, original. So he had another roof vent, popped that on there. Then as we're waiting for this thing to like, you know, set up and make sure that the, everything's working. I mentioned to him, I was like, well, you know, my backup cameras flip, you know, the monitor's not working anymore all of a sudden. And now I have this car tow dolly with my car and I can't see behind me if it's on there still. And, oh, okay, let's go. So he jumps in the rig and we start looking at wires and following things. And the best part of St. Jim is he let me be there the entire time. I was handing him things. I was asking him questions. He was explaining things. He was very patient. He was like showing me stuff. It was really awesome because it's like, I want to know this stuff. I want to know for future me or to be able to share with someone else. So we ended up taking the dash, old camera da out of the dash, unscrewed it. And found out that there was wire, there was a wire that wasn't connected anymore that either maybe wasn't seated right to begin with, or, you know, we don't know. So we ended up putting a new connector on that. And now I have, boom, backup camera. So I'm super excited. So I'm safe with that. And then he also helped me with my water pump. I was going to fix it myself. And so he, you know, we just did it together. And um, we just like did a whole checklist of things. It was wonderful. And then by the end, we, we tested out everything really good. No leakage. I'm happy to report two days later that uh, the tank is getting full, thanks to me being a human and no smell. I mean, the RV smells good. Like the bathroom smells refreshing. It's like a place I don't mind being in. Like, it's amazing. It, it's amazing the differences can make. So I just want you to know that, uh, you know, again, we all hear this, but we still think that when we look at people's stories or their, you know, this glimpse of their life that, oh my God, they have it so together and so perfect. And why is my life such a struggle? Trust me, it's been a struggle, a stinky struggle, <laughs> but we get through it and we get through it with good people. And there are good people in the world that help us. So um, I'm really happy. I'm, I'm just like so thrilled with the way things are coming together and the latest thing. So now tonight it's, we're going to get down to 45 degrees here in Texas, which is crazy cold. We finally got a cold snap, but it like dropped, you know, 50 degrees to snap, which is crazy. And then it'll be back up to eighties again next week. But tonight overnight, I was like, okay, I haven't tested out the furnace heater. So I got brave and I unhooked things and I looked in there and whatever, switched it on. The fan didn't start. So that's, so I called Jim, St. Jim. And he was like, yeah, okay, no problem. Next week, da, 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 da. you know, so he's going to come back out. We're going to troubleshoot that sucker and get it running so that um, I do have a electric fireplace in my living room and I have an electric like heater I can use in the bedroom. But, you know, I'm going to want a boondock. I love, I actually really love the sound um, in all my rigs. I love the sound of a furnace kicking on. It's just, it's just cozy. I don't know. It makes me feel really cozy and happy. So 
we're going to get that fixed. Anyway, um, so aside from that, RV life, neighbors, I've met some really great neighbors, um, and that's been really fun. I've met some questionable neighbors as well, which happens, uh, you know, but they come and go. And uh, no, I've met some really lovely couples. One of them is from the Northwest, and we're actually going to be kind of camping in the same spot for the next couple months uh, until, you know, the end of the year. So that's going to be fun. I'll be able to hang out with them, uh, get to share some happy hours and sunsets and stuff like that. So it's always fun to meet folks. And this is, you know, some of my closest friends have come from campsites, from RV sites. And this is a big part of why I wanted to get back into RV life again, because I felt really isolated in my house working remotely and just not really having a chance to be able to get out and see people. So um, this is that we are already meeting our fair share of folks. And so that's good. Um, okay. Now we're on to the next topic of reader feedback. I received a text message from a reader unexpectedly. And this is sort of a, uh, a friend reader, like a new, new friend. Uh, okay. I'll just be honest. She's, she's like, she helps me clean my house. So, um, she and her crew, they do, I call them cleaning angels. Um, so we don't know each other that well. Right. Um, but she does know I'm doing this book tour and I gave her a copy of my book. Um, and so I get this message and she is, I mean, she is a worker. She is all these properties that they're cleaning. She is always on the move. She's also taking care of an autistic son. She just, I mean, like, I don't know how she does all the things. So this, Email was even more poignant when I got it, or I mean text message, and it popped up last night on my phone. And she, she, there's a picture of a, like her in a bathtub, not her, but just like a bathtub with a little tray and my book propped up and a little glass of wine. And she said, I haven't taken a bath at the end of the night for two years. I usually always just get in the shower, get it, get in and out, go to bed. I'm exhausted. She's like, but I really needed a moment of self-care and I grabbed your book and I did it. And she's like, this is the best thing. She's like, I am so grateful that I had this moment and I can't wait. And then she, of course she's like talking about the character. She's like, I really hope that Kate and Zach stay together. And all that. It, was, it was really sweet, but it just meant so much to me. And it reminded me again, like, this is why I really write these stories for y'all. Like I really write them um, to uplift folks, to help you have that self-care moment. Have that moment where you get away, you go, you know, you don't have to have all the drama and the, you know, the stress and the negative kind of, you know, there's, I mean, there's nothing against like mysteries and murder mysteries and all the things that people love to watch to relax, but it can on your psyche kind of get wearing, you know, wear you down a bit. And uh, this, this series is all about just taking care of you and feeling good and feeling cozy. And after you, you know, read a few chapters and, or read the whole thing, and then you can just go to sleep or whatever, you know, go about your day and just have a different perspective, feel a little bit more lifted up. Um, maybe be excited to plan your next trip to Fredericksburg and to see the places yourself. So that was a wonderful, wonderful you know, I really appreciate that. I appreciate hearing the feedback like that. I don't hear feedback a lot, honestly. It's, uh, you know, there's of all the people that buy my books, there's only a few that I hear back from. And um, and it really means so much to me. So, um, yes, I think that kind of wraps things up. Oh, I did a giveaway, spontane a spontaneous giveaway at the market last weekend uh, online on social media. I posted a reel and said, if you know, you commented, you get a chance to win a book. And so I was happy to send three books off to Vonda, Terry, and to um, Hope. And that was really fun to, to surprise them with books and a little, a little package, a little sweet little package. So um, might do that again. You never know. Stay tuned. Um, so again, uh, continuing book tour, We'll be in San Antonio this Saturday, the 19th. And then um, the following week, I'll keep you posted. I'll let you know how the trip to San Antonio went. And um, just 
other news, what's happening and where we're at with care camps, donations and any other fun stuff that's going on. So I really appreciate you tuning in when you can. I know that it's hard to find the time to listen to all the things, to watch all the things. There's a lot going on in the world. So um, thank you for taking the time to listen to me. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week. If you are going to be in San Antonio, pop by. I'd love to meet you. And, uh, and Dottie would love to meet you too. Anyway, thank you so much. Again, this is Texas Book Talk with Heather Renee May and also Flipping Dreams podcast. Take care, y'all. Be safe.